Hello, and welcome to 1.5, Five Key Equations for Motion with Uniform Acceleration. So this is um, a really important lesson. We're going to have five equations in this lesson, and those five equations are going to be lasting you for the rest of forever in physics. They're very, very useful equations. So, we're going to get right into this. We're starting this lesson with sort of seeing how we get these equations. But at the bottom of the page, you'll see there's a little table. Um, I'll just show you here. This table are those five equations. And those you will have on tests, you will have on a formula sheet. You don't need to memorize them. And these are the equations that you're going to be using to solve all sorts of kinematics problems. OK, so we're just going to see how we can get some of these equations first. We're starting with the area under a velocity time graph. And if you remember from the last lesson, if we take the area under a velocity graph, it'll give us the displacement. So that's the area under our graph. So to the right here, we've got a velocity time graph. We're going to take the area under it to try to get our first equation. So since the area under it is equal to displacement, we already just said that, we can say displacement is equal to well, the area for a rectangle is going to be length times width, and the area for a triangle is going to be one-half times base times height. That's, you know, just the area for a rectangle, area for a triangle. So I'm going to write that down here. So this is going to be length times width plus one-half base times height. Okay, now the length of this this rectangle is delta t, right? This is the change in time. So we've got delta t, and the height is from 0 to vi. So this is delta t times vi plus 1 half base times height. Now the base is the same thing, it's this delta t here. So 1 half delta t, the height now is vf minus vi. And again, we're just doing this so that we can see how we get these equations. OK, so there is the first step of our equation. I can clean that up by taking the delta t out of everything. So now we have delta t times vi plus 1 half vf minus 1 half vi. And so you can see that these vi's are actually going to clean up a bit as well. OK, so I get displacement is equal to, I'm going to take the 1 half out, 1 half delta t. And you can see that I have vf plus vi, because I was left with 1 half vi above. OK, and this is basically our equation. So this gives us equation number one. This is our first kinematics equation, which looks like this, displacement is equal to vf plus vi over 2 times delta t. You'll see that that is the same as, as what we just wrote above. Um, I'll just clean up that box because it cut off the 2 a bit at the bottom. OK, there we go. OK, so that's our first kinematics equation. Um, now, we're going to try getting equation number 2. So it says, solve the average acceleration equation for Vf. Well, average acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. And that's Vf minus Vi over delta T. If I rearrange this, it gets me equation 2. Vf is equal to A delta T plus Vi. And there we go. That's equation number two. So you can see that these are already some useful equations for solving some kinematics of problems. Okay, and our third one here, substitute Vf from equation two into our first equation. And it's going to give us equation three. So you can see that we have displacement equals, now for Vf, I'm going to substitute A delta T 
plus vi plus vi again over 2 delta t. And so this gives us equation 3. When I clean that up, displacement is equal to vi delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. And there we go. That's how we get those three equations. Using the same sorts of tricks, we can get the last two. Um, but we're not going to look at the last two there. I mean, they're in our table. So these are the five really important equations. And so you can see we have displacement, uh, Vf, displacement again, displacement again, Vf squared. That's how these equations are written. But you can rearrange any of these to solve for any variable. So we're going to take a quick look at each of these here. The first equation, you can see we have displacement, Vf, Vi, and delta t. So if I was to ask what are the variables in the equation, we can let, write those there. Displacement, Vf, Vi, delta t. Now when we're talking about kinematics, there's usually five variables we're interested in. These four that I've just written, as well as acceleration, which acceleration doesn't show up in that equation at all. But if I was to look at equation two, write the same thing. We've got Vf, Vi, A now, and delta t. And if I was to ask what's missing, well, you'll notice there's no displacement in that one. And that's true for each of these. They're each missing one variable. So equation three is missing Vf. Equation 4 is missing, missing vi, and equation 5 is missing delta t. And this is really important. That's why we have five equations. Because each of these equations you can use while you're missing one variable. So if I'm solving some problem and I have no idea what the acceleration is, I can still solve the problem. Same with if I have no idea what the final velocity is, then I use that equation. So we're going to look at that on the next page. We're going to solve some problems using these equations. OK, let's get started here. First one says a sports car approaches the highway, uh, approaches a highway on-ramp at a velocity of 20 meters per second east. If the car accelerates at a rate of 3.2 meters per second squared east for five seconds, what's the displacement of the car? OK, so we're going to use we're going to set up this problem. And to set up the problem, I'm going to use what's called the GRESS method. G-R-E-S-S. -S. And if you haven't seen this before, GRESS stands for give, uh, oops, sorry, stands for given, required, equations, Solution, oops, ah, equations, solution, and statement. And the way I use these is that I write down each letter. So first I write down G, and G is for given, so I write down all the information I was given. I was given VI equals 20 point zero meters per second east. My acceleration is equal to 3.2 meters per second squared east. And delta t is 5.0 seconds. That all came straight from the question. Now, I haven't been using the GRESS method up until now because we've been dealing with pretty simple problems, but now that we're getting more complex problems, using GRESS is a nice, clean way of setting up your problems. It's not required. You can solve your problems however you like, but if you use GRESS, it's a nice, safe way of making sure you're, you're doing all the steps correctly. So I've got my given. My required, well, it wants me to find the displacement, so that's delta d. Now for the equation step. And this is where we need to make a decision. In the problem, we're given vi, a, delta t, 
and we want to solve for displacement. So if I go to the right here, I've just included for you, just for today, just for these um, problems here, a little chart that's going to help us. So I'm going to circle each of the, um, the values that we're working with here. So we're given VI, we're given A, we're given delta T, and we want to solve for delta D, so I'm going to circle that one as well, which means that the only one we're missing here is VF. That tells me which equation to use. So I'm going to pop back onto the previous page, find the one that's missing VF, that's this one here, and I'm going to use that equation. Delta D equals VI delta T over here, plus one half A delta T squared. So I go back onto this page here, and I put that equation. Delta D equals VI delta T plus one half A delta T squared. Now I can write my solution. So I'm going to take that same equation and I'm going to plug in some numbers. So VI was 20. Delta T was 5. And notice I'm not writing units or anything. Um, I don't require that you write units during this step just for your final answer. Of course you can if you like to. So plus one half acceleration was 3.2 and this is in the same direction so it's positive. And our delta T again is 5.0. I'll square that. Okay, that was just using the equation. It gets us a final answer of, sorry, it gets us a final answer of four, um, 140 meters east. Good. So that's our final answer. The last step here to the GRASS method is to write a statement and on a test, on that sort of a situation, I do expect that you write a concluding statement. That could just be as simple as this. Three dots means therefore. Um, so you could just write therefore displacement is 140 meters east. Or I, I'm going to say here, therefore the displacement is 140 meters east. Just like that, there's my statement. Okay, so we're going to do that just a couple more times. This one here says a sailboat accelerates uniformly from 6 meters per second north to 8 meters per second north at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared north. What distance does the boat travel? So again, we're going to write our given. So we have our initial, sp uh, initial velocity is 6 meters per second north. Final velocity is 8. Okay, and our acceleration 0 0.50, again, north. Required, it wants to know the distance. So we're going to be finding displacement now. We don't actually care about the um, so actually I'm just going to remove the arrow on there because all it cares about is distance so I'm just going to write this without the vector. Now we've got to choose what equation we want to use. So we'll go over here again. The I we have, the F we have, acceleration, and we want to solve for displacement. That means that we don't know or care about delta T. So we go on to the previous page, find the equation that doesn't have delta T, it's so this one, VF squared. Now, on a test, you will have these. You won't have this list, so it's up to you to, to get a feeling for which equation to use. You can just look in the equation and you can see there's no delta T. That's the one I want to use. Okay, so going back here, my equation is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2a delta d. And notice I've left off arrows on this one because it asked for distance, not displacement. Okay, and so moving on here, we have my solution. And the solution, we just um, 
first we need to rearrange the equation for displacement. So I can say displacement, or in this case distance, equals vf squared minus vi squared over 2a. Now I can plug in some numbers. 8 squared minus 6 squared over 2 times 0 0.5. So this is going to give me 64 minus 36 over 1, which is 28 meters. And finally, my statement. Therefore, the displacement is 28 meters. Okay, and there's one last question with part A, part B. It says, a dart is thrown at a target that is supported by a wooden backstop. It strikes the backstop with an initial velocity of 350 meters per second east. It's a lot of speed. The dart comes to a rest in 0 .005 seconds. So it goes from very fast to stopped in a very short amount of time. Again, we're going to set this up. It says, what is the acceleration of the dart? So we set up our given. The initial velocity is 350. That's vi. Delta t equals 0 0.0050 seconds. And now I need one more piece of information. Those are the only two numbers in the problem, but it tells me that the dart comes to a rest. That tells me that the final velocity is 0 meters per second. Now it requires me to find the acceleration. I need to pick my equation, so I've got vi, vf, acceleration, oh, and I'm sorry, uh, yeah, acceleration and we have delta t don't know anything about displacement, we don't care about displacement, so we go on to the previous page, find the one with no displacement, it's this one. Vf equals Vi plus A delta T. Good. So, solution A is equal to Vf minus Vi over delta t, and we just plug in our numbers. Our final velocity, initial velocity, our time, and it gives us negative 70,000 meters per second squared east. And we don't like to leave a number looking like that, um, not a negative plus a direction. We want to change that to its correct direction. So this is going to be 70,000 meters per second squared going west. And finally we have our statement. The acceleration is 70,000 meters per second squared west. Good. I'm going to leave this very last problem for you to try out yourselves. And um, there's a few homework problems that we'll have time in class to work on. So I'll see you in the next lesson.